So I did some some thinking today and thought a bit about content for the game. So How do you find uh, how do you search a channel by name in Discord? Maybe they removed it. One second. I'm just gonna bring down my chat monitor. Good evening, Navid. What's up? How are you doing this Monday? Oh, you're at work. Okay. Oh yeah, it's only what five five p.m. in uh, Spain. Got it. Got it. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by. So today. Yeah, I had, I did some, some writing today on what I want to do. Thank you, man. Thank you. And I got pretty excited. So I think I, I really want to double down on the crafting and building theme so 
so like allow the player to resource gather, build things, survive, just with my own twist. I mean, there are games like that, but I'd have my own twist on it. So, I want the player, so first of all, I actually want the, the environment to be, to not be boxy anymore. But I want to solve somehow so that it's like streamlined. I mean, it can be, uh, there can be corners. It can be a bit like uh, low poly, at least in the beginning. But I don't want it to be boxy anymore. So remove boxiness. Yeah, I already have that as a target here resource gathering we can move back make the ground non boxy and then i was thinking like the first thing that the player can build is like uh let's say you have a a tree it's a beautiful tree um and then Oh, it's a bad illustration, actually. So then let's say the player chooses to build a... They need somewhere to sleep over the night. So then they pick some branches and just build a little shed here for sleeping. That's like how the crafting starts. Be right back. But let's think about how to solve the boxiness ground uh, thing. Maybe that has to be like a like a a new shape altogether. Like, how can we represent something like that? It's a bit unclear to me. Let's, let's have a look here. Attack. Attack.
All right. <laughs> this is showing my Google history. It's dangerous. Um, 3D environment generation. I think I've seen this before. Hi everyone, welcome to the series on procedural landmass generation. So just as a quick overview, we're going to begin by generating height maps using Perlin noise, then we'll assign terrain types to the various height ranges, and finally use all of this information to construct our 3D mesh. So in this introductory episode, I'd just like to talk a little bit about noise. This here is regular noise with values for each pixel picked randomly between 0 and 1. Perlin noise, however, is a type of coherent noise, which means that changes occur gradually. So if we were to take a slice of this noise, we'd get something that looks a bit like a section of mountainous terrain. Just two quick bits mm -hmm. of terminology that you're probably already familiar with. Uh, when we talk about amplitude, that's the y-axis, who is this guy? Sebastian Lag. Spent a week making an AI's video game idea. Cool. I like this channel. Should definitely subscribe to it. That's cool. While frequency deals with the x-axis. But back to our mountain. Currently, it's far too smooth. We need a way to add in detail while preserving the overall shape. And we do this by layering multiple levels of noise. So here in blue, we have three noise maps, commonly referred to as octaves. In red, we have the result when all of these octaves are added together. So if the first octave represents the sort of main outline of the part of the power one, and so on for however many production, uh, then cheers. I want to see how he converts this into 3D shapes. One of the best artists of the 21st century. Wow, that's that's nice. Colors, mesh, and level of detail. Dude, I think this is exactly what I need. Threading, LOD, switching. Hi everyone, welcome to episode 5. So today we're going to be creating our terrain mesh. And we'll do this by generating a flat plane and then just setting the heights of the individual vertices. Let's talk a bit about how this is going to work. So say we have a map that is three by three, so we'll have nine vertices, and we need to store these in a one-dimensional array, so we'll label them zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, as you're no doubt aware, meshes are made up of triangles, so we need to supply an array of integers where each sort of set of three integers points to the vertices that make up that triangle. So say we start at vertex 0, 
we could make the triangle 0, 4, 4, 3, 3, 0. So to our triangles array, mm. we'd add the integers 0, 4, 3. So that moves in a clockwise order and defines our first triangle. Then we'd want to complete the other half of the square. So we could go 4 to 0, yeah, 0 to, to 1, this. and 1 back to 4. So then to our triangles array, we'd add the integers 4, 0, 1. And you can imagine how this would continue for the rest of them. 1 to 5, 5 to 4, 4 to 1, and then 5 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 5, and so on. Now we need to be able to calculate beforehand how many elements our arrays are going to contain. So the number of vertices is easy enough to calculate. Vertices is equal, of course, to the width times the height. Working out the length of our triangles array is only a tiny bit harder. So we first need to know how many squares these vertices form. So that would simply be width minus 1 multiplied by height minus 1. And then each square is made up of two triangles of three vertices each. So we just need to then multiply this by 6. OK, so in our Unity project, let's create a new c -sharp script. Call this the Mesh Generator. Let's open that up. So this is going to be a public static class, which once again means that we won't extend from MonoBehavior. And I'm just going to make a public static void method called generate terrain mesh. And as an argument, we'll take in the 2D float array of our height map. So we can easily figure out the width and height of the height map just by going int width is equal to height map dot get length zero and int height is equal to height map dot get length one. All right, so now we're going to want to loop through our height map. So let's say four int y equals zero, y less than the height, y plus plus, and four int x equals zero, x less than the width, x plus plus. So now we're going to want to start creating our vertices. So for convenience sake, let's just quickly create a public class down here outside of the mesh generator. We can call this something like mesh data. And this, for now, will just contain a public vector three array, our vertices. This is going to be so interesting to implement. I think this is going to be needed. And it's also a very interesting area to learn about. So like, as he showed, yeah, there will all be triangles. And then I guess we're setting each vertex as its own height, and that affects the triangles around it. Something like that. And then we're building triangles between all of the vertices. Something like that. And then when we come to mine, let's say the ground is moving like that. And we we are hitting our pickaxe on here. Should move that vertex down here. But since that is moving down here, this thing here now will have its vertex moved down here. I think that will happen automatically then. So the ground will kind of adapt. Yeah. Unless these are disconnected and there's two, like a, a wall like that. We'll see. It's going to be some, uh, quite a lot of triangle calculations here, I think. as well as a public interray for our triangles. And then this will have a constructor, public mesh data, 
So we'll just take an int for the mesh width and the mesh height. And we can then initialize our variables. So vertices is equal to a new array of vector threes with a size of mesh width by mesh height. And then as we discussed, the triangles array will have a size of mesh width minus one multiplied by- Let me just try with code to create some kind of mesh. Should I do it in this same project? Oh, is this it? An array mesh. Go dot. Yeah. Create mesh with code array mesh basics. Constructing a surface from arrays, vertices, push back, push back, push back. Wait, mesh dot array max. What, oh, arrays. Mesh dot array vertex. Array mesh add surface from arrays. Primitive triangles. Arrays. This is next level. But if we're working with like instead of working with boxes and we want to be able to like if we have ground we want to be able to like cut the hole and then go in under the ground how will our array mesh handle that at some point it needs to allow like a downwards expansion, but I guess that is possible somehow. And then depending on the material type, like they can be, you can be allowed to have like these tunnels, for example, or the array mesh just falls apart or something. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be fun to learn. This is so cool. Um, let's try, I'm just going to copy paste this once. Far away. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so wait a minute, if I, if I take that back, can I add? What were they called in the code here? Uh, add surface from arrays. Can I do that here? Array mesh. Resource. Uh, I guess that's the what it wants. And it's going to need a skin. This is gonna be deep, I think. But it's also gonna be very powerful to learn this. Let's create a new project for that. Or no, let's keep it in this one. Otherwise I will get uh, sidetracked again, I think. So let's do... Bank spawn mesh. And then we do add child of mesh. I think this needs to go further up. Let's do like 11, because otherwise I don't think we will see it. 11, 10, 10. Nothing there. This is so cool. <laughs> Still pretty amazed by it. Instructs the GPU how to arrange the primitive based on the vertices given. And how do we handle that? Oh, there's this is so interesting. Like, how do we handle that when it comes to if we want it to be infinite? Like when we're walking around, I guess we need to update the mesh and the array as we move around again. Like add onto it. But in the case of the boxes, we can build a word like this with an array mesh. How does that work? need to learn more. Let's ask our friend ChatGPT. OK. 
Can you write some GT script? No, I'm gonna ask uh, Bing. Put some more, I think, recent data for me that creates an array mesh above Y with a vertical height 10. Hmm. Yeah, what if we do this instead? Push back. Do do do. Sometime. Oh oh. Oops. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Love is always on time. Nothing here. I think. Can we make it even higher? Just extreme. For once, maybe it will work. Nope. I mean, let's uh, let's try. Quad. Oh no, I want it to be tri. Uh, yeah, triangles. So why is it not showing? Oh, because we're not running it, of course. Add child. Ah. Uh. Oh, the inspiration. <laughs> no wait, it's not R mesh, it's uh, M. And then ten, ten, eleven. seeing anything okay 
let's do zero zero and then like a hundred. Not seeing anything. So what did Copilot say? Okay, try this. Is Malcolm clear? Ah. Hmm. I want to get that to work. Why is it not working? Let's uh, save whatever we have to uh, get. I don't know what this thing is. I don't want to add a temp file. Git restore. There we go. Latest working, you can add boxes on boxes and see focus and then we don't have to worry that we can uh, destroy something I think I will need to do a new project for this. Get status. Okay. Good. You. Call this mesh array mesh. And then we do add child dot uh, m dot and let's add a save ah okay detach camera Uh, 
and then a world environment. And this world environment needs a sky, new sky, and procedural sky material. And let's go. Okay, it is there, so it is working. Interesting. I guess this is the top of it. Then it goes down, left. So if I make this like 100, it's going to go really, really high. Yeah. And so if we take this and copy it back to the... other project, what will happen? That's odd. Oh, there it is. Oh, uh, just I was standing too close to it. <laughs> I'm just seeing it from one direction. Ah, there it is. Cool. Okay, that's a good start. And then what happens if I add another one, which is like also a hundred. Now it's not visible at all, I think. No. They're like 25, what happens if we do that? So now something happened. So it's like another triangle in the same space. It's only visible from one direction. Huh, I need to learn more of this. More about this. Cool. So going into down into triangles, triangle calculations. That's some good stuff. Cool, all right. I think this will actually, uh, it's going to be the end of the stream for today. It's a bit of a shorter stream. Um, might come back later, let's see. But uh, thank you for, for dropping by and uh, see you in the next one. May wake out. Bye-bye.